Ordinary linear regression often fails to correctly describe skewed or heteroscedastic data, totally screws up if data has outliers, and describes only the mean of the response variable. A quantile regression promises to solve all these problems and delivers more results. Particularly, quantile regression is robust to outliers and influential points, does not assume a constant variance, also known as homoscedasticity, for the response variable or the residuals, does not assume normality, but the main advantage of quantile regression over linear regression is that quantile regression explores different values of the response variable instead of only the average and delivers therefore a more complete picture of the relationships between variables. So let's take problematic data, build both linear and quantile models, and see whether quantile regression can solve problems and be a truly useful alternative for ordinary linear regression. We'll first see how both models deal with outliers. For that, we'll create a small dataset with one obvious outlier and use Geom smooth function to create a linear model and Geom quantile function for a quick quantile regression with only fifth quantile, which makes it a median-based regression. This plot shows that linear model tries to please all points and misses most of them, which results in a bad fit. In contrast, the median regression ignores the outlier and visually fits the rest of the data much better. But how do we know that median regression is indeed better? Well, if we create an ordinary and quantile regressions, we can compare the amount of information they lose. The AKX information criterion measures such loss of information. Namely, the lower the AIC, the better the model. Thus, a lower AIC of quantile regression indicates a smaller loss of information from the data, as compared to linear regression, making quantile regression a better model. Moreover, since the slope of linear regression is not significant, while the slope of quantile regression is, using a wrong model could cost you an important discovery, so no Nobel Prize for you. Now, let's take a real-world heteroscedastic data and see whether median regression handles it better. Angel dataset from Quantrack package explores the relationship between household food expenditure and household income. Similarly to previous example, the median and mean fits are quite different, which can be explained by the strong effect of the two unusual points with high income and low food expenditure, probably just greedy people. In order to better justify the use of quantile regression, we can check heteroscedasticity via broish pagan test. Our test detects heteroscedasticity so that we again need an alternative to linear regression. And a lower AIC of median-based regression again shows a better fit as compared to the mean-based regression. Now, let's see how both models handle not normally distributed or skewed data and at the same time see how they handle categorical predictors. For that, we'll use a wage dataset from ISLR package and model the salary of 30 industrial and IT workers. And when we check the assumptions of linear model, we'll see that our data has no outliers, but is not normally distributed and variances between groups differ. So our data is again heteroscedastic. And that's a big problem, because if several assumptions of a model fail, we cannot trust the results of such model. And what are those results? Well, a linear model reveals that average annual salary of IT workers is almost 37,000 bucks higher as compared to industrial workers, and such big difference in means is significant. While median regression shows that IT crowd earns only $19.6 thousand dollars more, and this difference in medians is not significant. The lower AIC of the median regression again shows that quantile regression performs better than linear regression. So that, while in the case with outliers, linear regression missed an important discovery, here linear regression discovered nonsense. Such nonsense is often caused by small samples. And indeed, if we take all 3000 workers from which dataset, we'll see that both models show significantly higher salary of IT crowd 
as compared with factory workers. However, the median regression still shows a smaller difference, and the smaller AIC tells us that quantile regression is still a better model, which makes sense for not normally distributed and heteroscedastic data. Now, let's finally get to the main advantage of quantile regression. While median regression delivers better results, the median is still a single central location similar to the mean. But since median regression is a special case of quantile regression, which uses only a fifth quantile, and since quantile regression can easily model other quantiles too, a quantile regression allows you to easily model low and high salaries. In other words, quantile regression can be extended to non-central locations. Namely, if we take a low quantile, for example 0.1 instead of 0.5, will model the difference between low-income factory versus low-income IT workers. Similarly, if we take a high quantile, for example 0.9 instead of 0.5, we'll be able to check the difference between top salaries of industrial versus top salaries of IT workers. The results show that for low salaries, the difference between industrial and IT jobs is smaller than for median and high salaries. The reason for that could be education, so that when your education level is low, switching jobs from factory to IT would only increase your salary by circa 8,000 bucks, while when you have a college degree, changing to IT will increase your salary by over 25,000 bucks. However, the reason itself is not important. What is important here is that while ordinary linear regression describes only an average change in salaries when we switch from industrial to IT job, a quantile regression uncovers what happens after you switch jobs having low, median or high salary. In other words, a new salary after switching jobs depends on the salary before switching, which makes sense. But what doesn't make any sense is that an ordinary linear regression overpromises increase in salary for low earners and underpromises increase in salary for high earners. Thus, quantile regression reveals a more complete picture of reality and allows you to make a more informed decision. But that's just the beginning, because similarly to low or high quantiles, we can model more quantiles to get more useful inference. And we can even model the entire conditional distribution of salaries via all possible quantiles, by defining the sequence of quantiles from, let's say, 0.1 to 0.9, and defining this step in order to control how many quantiles we model. For example, using by 0.1 will model 9 quantiles from 0.1 to 0.9. Plotting the summary of our model uncovers how switching to IT affects the entire conditional distribution of salaries. The red lines show the mean effect with confidence intervals estimated by linear regression, while shaded gray area shows confidence intervals for the quantile regression estimates. The non-overlapping confidence intervals between quantile and linear regression can be seen as significant difference between models. So that linear regression significantly overpromises the increase in salaries when you switch to IT for low and medium earners if we ignore the very small overlap from 0.3 to 0.6 quantiles, significantly underestimates the increase in salary for top earners while correctly describes the increase in salary for only a small part of workers with already relatively high salaries. So I think a univariable quantile regression is already much more useful than linear regression. But that's not all. Multivariable quantile regression is even more useful because it can uncover which variables are important for low or for high values of the response variable. Let's have a look at two multivariable examples. In the first example, we'll continue to model salaries, but instead of only a job class predictor, we'll add age and race predictors. Let's interpret the influence of age on salary first. The young low earners would significantly increase their salaries as they age, because y-axis, which shows the slope of this increase, is positive and does not include zero. 
However, this realistic increase over lifetime is significantly smaller than average promised by the linear regression because red and gray confidence intervals don't overlap. The young high earners have much higher slope, meaning much stronger increase in salary over lifetime, which was significantly underestimated by the linear regression. Here again, high educational degree could cause young people to earn a lot of money already in the beginning of their lives and opens better chances to increase the salary over lifetime. The interpretation of the categorical predictor race is even more interesting. Since white people are the intercept, black and Asian Americans can be compared to white Americans. Here, linear regression shows that on average, for low-income folks, black people earn significantly less than white people, because the coefficient is negative and does not cross the zero, which is wrong. Because in reality, since gray confidence intervals cross the zero, there is no significant difference between white and black folks with low income. In contrast, when salaries are high, black workers earn significantly less than white workers, even when they earn millions. The wages of Asian Americans show the opposite. Namely, while linear regression mistakenly predicts that Asian folks get significantly more than white folks, independently of their salary, quantile regression shows that low-income Asian people earn significantly less or similar to white people. Since in all of the panels of the plot, the quantile regression estimates lie at some point outside the confidence intervals for the ordinary linear regression, we can conclude that the effects of job class, age, and race are not constant across salaries, but depend on the height of the salary. And if that's not enough, you can go one step further and conduct a non-parametric, non-linear quantile regression for numeric predictors using quant rec growth package. But before you do that, have a look at the last example, where we check the influence of five predictors on the efficiency of cars. Here, a linear regression will answer the question which variables affect the average car mileage. A low quantile of 0.1 will tell us which predictors are important for not efficient cars, which drive only a few miles per gallon of gas. A high quantile of 0.9 will tell us which predictors are important for highly efficient cars, which drive a lot of miles per gallon of gas. We'll also conduct a median regression in order to compare it to linear regression and for a more complete presentation of the results. Let's start with that. The negative coefficient of horsepower indicates significant decrease in efficiency of cars with increasing horsepower. Both mean-based and median-based models agree on that. However, while linear regression reports engine displacement to be not important for efficiency, Median regression shows that it is important. Moreover, quantile regression reports that increasing acceleration significantly reduces mileage of not efficient cars and has no effect on highly efficient cars, while linear regression can't say anything about low or highly efficient cars. The SE need argument produces 95% confidence intervals and p values, which allow to build this useful table. And if you want to learn how to produce similar publication-ready tables for data summaries, results of statistical tests or models, check out my video on GT Summary Package.